Welcome to another great EECS 203 Discrete Mathematics presentation by Group B22 with Colin Yokish, Jim Rashi, Whitney Huang, and myself, Ronak Mehta. And this is Combinations. So today we're going to look at combinations with repetitions, and it basically means that out of a set with n different kinds of elements, we can select each kind of element as many times as we want. Um, so the, the formula that we have for doing this is... is r plus n minus 1 and select r. So now I'm going to explain this. Um, for example, we have a set um, with three different kinds of elements. Black stars, blue stars, and red stars. So now we're going to select a line of stars and we're going to see how many different kinds of ways we can select it with colors. Now, these stars are all indistinguishable. It doesn't matter what stars they are. We only care about what color they are. So we're going to do this by pretending that each star falls into some kind of category. And we're going to differentiate the categories by using um, these bars to um, show us where they are. So for example, this will be one kind of star. This will be another kind of star. And this will be other kind of star. You'll notice that with three kinds of stars, we only need two bars. So to generalize this with n kinds of stars, or n kinds of things in a set, we'll need only n minus 1 bars. So now we look at the whole thing. And how many things do we have in this lineup? We have the number of stars, um, so this is 5. And then we have the number of bars, which is 2. So to generalize this in any kind of set, where we're picking, we're going to have the number of things that we're picking, which is r, plus the number of bars. So this corresponds to the top of our equation. Now we can see that um, our combination is similar to just picking where these bars go. Now we're always going to have n minus 1 bars, so it will be equivalent to having r plus n minus 1, choosing n minus 1. Now from the definition of a combination, we'll know that this will be equal to r plus n minus 1, choose r. That's the same thing as saying as we can choose where the stars go in between with the bars that are already set. I'm going to use a simple example to demonstrate combination with repetition. So in this example, we're going to pick four fruit from a bowl containing three, bananas, peaches, and blueberries, which means we have four combinations with repetition of a three-element set. Now to do this, I'm going to write all the combinations out to demonstrate that this is indeed the case. Firstly, we can have four of any individual fruit. We can have four bananas, we can have four peaches, or we can have four blueberries. Nextly, if we decide to have three bananas, we can have either a blueberry or three bananas and a peach. If we bring that number down to two bananas, we can have a blueberry and a peach in either combination, or two bananas, two peaches, or two bananas, and two blueberries. Continuing with the banana example, if we had one, if we had one banana, we could have two peaches and a blueberry, or we could have two blueberries and a peach. Um, that's all the combinations we can have with bananas. After this, they're going to be zero. So continuing with more options, we could also have three peaches and a banana, or three peaches and a blueberry. In addition to that, with, with having more than one peach, we'd have two peaches and two blueberries. The two peaches and two bananas example is already used in the other part. So we'll continue on with the number of blueberries. We can have three blueberries and one banana, or three blueberries and a peach. And add them all up, and that's 15 ways that you can choose four fruit from three different types. 
Now this process of going through all different combinations of fruit is somewhat tedious. Let's see if we can make it easier using the definition from before. We had n equals 3 different types of fruit, and we had 4 choices that we wanted. Now going back to the stars and bars example, we had n minus 1 bars, which is 2, and we had r stars, 4. So we had 1, 2, 3, 4 stars, and we had bars. Now we can see from the definition that this will be a combination of n plus r minus 1 choose r. And if we solve this out using our numbers from before, we have 4 plus 3 minus 1 factorial over 4 factorial 2 factorial, which is equal to 6 factorial over 2 factorial 4 factorial, which is equal to 15 which is what we got when we iterated through the combinations. Let's do an example that involves more of an equation-based system. So if you had three boxes that you wanted to put a certain number of items in, let's say 27. And we can solve this given the equation that we just used. Minus one and choose our items. So here we're trying, choosing from 27 items to put into three boxes. Or if you want to use the stars example, or stars and bars example, we would have two bars and 27 stars. So we're just going to fill in the numbers here. 27 plus 3 minus 1. Choose 3. We have 29 objects. And we're going to choose 3 from them. So the number of ways that you can add three numbers, x1, x2, and x3 to equal 27, there are 29 choose three ways to do that. So continue with the same problem, we're going to add the restriction that x1 must be greater than or equal to 5. So if we think about this logically, um, this means that out of the 27, we already know what five of them are, and we know that they're going to be in the category of x1. So since we already know what they are, we're going to subtract them out from the 27, which will give us 22. So now going back to the formula, we're going to do 22 plus 3, since we're still selecting from three categories, minus 1, and we're going to choose 3. And that will simplify to 24, choose 3. Given a slightly harder equation-based problem with conditions, let's see how we would do it if the number of objects in x1 has to be less than or equal to 5. Of course, we want to start out, we could add all the combinations possible if x1 is equal to 5, x1 initially starts with 4, starts with 3, starts with 2, starts with 1 object, starts with 0 objects. We'd add all of those combinations like we did in the last problem together, but there's a simpler way. <clears throat> So initially we can we know that all the combinations with the condition x1 less than or equal to 5 plus the combinations where x1 is greater than 6 has to equal all possible solutions. So from the first problem we know that all possible solutions to this equation given no conditions is 29 shoes 3. And we know how to find the number of combinations for x is greater than x1 has more than 6 things in it by the problem we just did, where we allot 6 to x1 and then take the remaining 21 elements and choose 3 from them. So now, now that we know the number of combinations for each x choose, or x is greater than 6, and all the solutions, we can plug those in plus 21 choose 3 must equal the total number of possible solutions. So, number of solutions where x1 it has five or fewer elements would be the total number minus when x1 
has greater than six elements. Thank you for watching our video on combinations with repetition. For more videos on the topic or videos on discrete mathematics in general, visit noaa.com. That's K N O A T O M.com.